Every class has a fat, smelly kid who eats paper, paste, and boogers. In my class, that kid's name was Dominic. Dominic is always blamed if there's a fart smell in the room. Dominic always looks a little dirty, and he usually has dandruff, zits, and greasy hair, and sometimes all of that's in his ears. Oh, and one more thing, Dominic is the kid you never, ever want to sit next to in class. Because in Catholic school, seating assignments are for life, or at least what feels like life, an entire school year. Sitting next to Dominic is the grammar school equivalent of being stuck next to the fat guy on an airplane, only it's for almost 10 months. It's also worse because you can't pretend to be asleep. Fourth grade was the grade my luck ran out. I sailed through my first three years at Most Precious Blood Grammar School with no problems that I can remember. In fact, I floated through my first few grades in a state that can only be described as delusional. I liked everyone, everyone liked me, and I thought it would stay that way forever. Then came Miss Haas's fourth grade class and my seating assignment next to Dominic. Offered up as a sacrifice, said Miss Haas. That was every Catholic school's teacher stock answer. Offer it up as a sacrifice. Don't like playing kickball in gym class? Offer it up as a sacrifice. Don't like having religion class every single day? Offer it up as a sacrifice. Don't like your seating assignment next to Mr. Stinkbomb for the entire year? You better damn sure offer it up as a sacrifice and hold your freaking nose. Every time I heard those six infuriating words, I felt like screaming, hey, sister, if my parents really wanted me to sacrifice, they would have sent me to public school. I mean, here we were shelling out big bucks for this bullshit, so I figured they either owed me a new seat or they owed old Smelly a bar of soap. Soon after entering the classroom that September, I discovered the entire year would be one big sacrifice. But unlike the typical sacrificial lamb, I had a little something in me that said, we're not going to take it, long before Twisted Sister was a twinkle in Dee Snyder's mascara-lined eye. I may have been a scrawny nine-year-old with crooked teeth and even crookeder bangs, but I wasn't about to lie down and accept it. Like my grandpa in the nursing home used to say to the nurses, hey, bitch, if I wanted to smell shit all day, I wouldn't be paying you to change my depends. After being shut down by Miss Haas, when I tried to plead my case for a new seat assignment, I silently decided that she was the enemy. This bitch couldn't be trusted. One of the few teachers at the school who wasn't a nun, Miss Haas was a rebel in her own right. She wore pants, but her rebellion benefited only her. She lounged at the front of the class, her chubby legs and cankles extended under her desk, her arms folded behind her head, elbows akimbo, while we sat with hands folded and ankles crossed under our desks in uncomfortable poly blend plaid sandpaper uniforms. We stared in disbelief, our mouths watering, as she cracked open one of the many boxes of Girl Scout cookies she kept in her desk. Cookies that she devoured one at a time as we licked our chops and tried to calculate how much longer it was until lunchtime. And what I would have given for that kind of lunch. A lunch of thin mints, do si tagalongs, and trefoils. But no, my mother had different ideas when it came to nutrition, and they were a source of misery and embarrassment on a daily basis, which, coincidentally, is the theme of the entire Catholic school system.